Well, welcome back, AP Calculus BC students. We are now going to take a look at a very special kind of series here that I've kind of slipped into topic 10.2. It's the telescoping series. And it's one of the series that isn't going to be covered on the BC exam, but I still think it's important enough to give you a little bit of insight to it because it can actually shed some light on some other series that we do end up discussing later on that are on the BC exam. So what is a telescoping series? Well, as I said before, they're not on the exam, but they're an important part of the family. And I've got my telescope and you can kind of see, I'm kind of trying to look, look in it here. Yep, I, I think I'm, do I see something? Yeah. And so what we've got here is a situation where we have a series of the form B1 minus B2 plus a B2 minus B3, et cetera, et cetera. You've, you've got this pair of terms that are being subtracted and they're isolated in these subgroups of two terms, right? So what happens here is we go through this and you can see that some of these terms will end up canceling away because they're the same value except with opposite signs. And so seemingly what would be left just between the first four terms or among the first four terms is B1 and B5. B1 subtracted B5. Well, that would be the sum of the first n terms. The first four terms would be B1 minus B5 here. But the problem is, is we don't really know what's happening long term in that situation. So what's going to be important to do is understand what is the behavior of that B sub n that we elusively don't know. And in turn, that can give us some information perhaps about Bn plus 1. So the only way that S sub n is going to converge is if B sub n approaches some finite number, right? We don't want that to be infinity as n approaches infinity. And if that happens, then we can say then that the sum of an infinite series, not one that stops at a certain n, is just simply going to be B1 minus the limit of the very far end value that we would encounter in that particular sequence. So let's take a look and see how this manifests itself in some actual examples. Example four, find the sum of the following series in part A gives us the summation of one over two to the n minus one over two to the n plus one. Well, I'm a strong advocate of writing out the terms in a telescoping series. It's one of the few times that I really mandate that my students write at least four of these out to get an idea about where this is headed. So notice we start with n equal one, and so we'd have one over two to the first minus one over two to the second, which I'm just gonna go ahead and simplify and call that one fourth. Now, I would constitute one half minus fourth one fourth as our first term even though that there are two parts to it so I will refer to these sometimes as part one and part two of the first term then if I go in add and let n be two I have one over two squared one fourth minus one over two to the third which is one eighth and now we are on a roll let's keep doing this let n be 3, I have 1 8th minus 1 over 2 to the 4th is 16. And then let's go ahead and think about going to the very, very, very end. Well, <laughs> there is no very end, right? You can only go as far as, say, the nth term in this case, because it's just going to keep going on forever and ever and ever. Even beyond this, even into my example B that I don't want to to get in the way of. So what we have to understand is that this pattern of these terms, the second part of the first term and the first part of the second term are going to cancel, and that pattern will continue forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, but there's always going to be this piece that we're not going to necessarily be able to account for. We might be able to cancel this one over two to the end with something that came before it, but this guy is a bit of an enigma. But we understand that 
any future term after him is going to have the same kind of relationship in that if we let n approach infinity, then something very well might happen to him. Maybe he's going to be infinity. Maybe he's going to approach a finite number. And that's where we find the limit. So what we're going to do is say that the sum of this series is simply this first term, one half, that never had a chance to cancel, minus the limit as n approaches infinity of, and then we have this thing, the b sub n plus 1 term. Well, what is that b sub n plus 1 term? What is that really all about? I can make this infinity look better. Well, there's a variety of ways that one could write this. But one way that we could certainly think of it is we could just go into this expression and maybe change all of these n's to n plus 1. OK, well, that certainly works. We could do that. And upon writing that, we would have something along the lines of this. Now, notice what I did here, as you may be writing this as well. Each of these n's changed to an n plus 1. But in the grand scheme of things, we have a pretty good notion that all of this limit is just going to become a 0. Because 1 over 2 to something really big minus 1 over 2 to something really big is just going to both be 0. And so it turns out that this sum is just going to be 1 half. And that's all you would do there. Now I have to mention, these can be a little tricky. Because I have seen some instances where a couple of terms might be non-cancelable, or maybe up to three terms might not cancel. So I implore you to write out at least three terms, maybe even a fourth if it's not too much trouble, before you might get to some general term to really get a hold of that pattern. Because this is sort of a guideline for what happens generally maybe most of the time but this b1 is not to be taken all that literally sometimes you have the potential to have a few more terms that don't cancel away now let's take a look at part b which has got just a little bit of a different flair to it this does not look like it is of the form of a telescoping series that has this pair of pieces separated by a subtraction sign. So what you have to do from time to time is rewrite an expression, in this case 1 over n times n plus 1, so that it has that form. And the way that you're going to do that is your good friend the partial fraction decomposition method. Perhaps you remember this back from the integration days. Did I just hear you guys moan and groan about that? I think I heard that through my speaker. No, don't worry about this. It's not a, a troubling thing. All right, you guys are pretty good at doing this method by the time you get to this point in BC. We just got to find this A and B so that we can write this in, in, in this nice way. So you'll multiply through by the common denominator, which of course is going to be n times n plus 1. So that would give 1 on the left side. A will multiply by n plus 1. B will multiply by n. And then you can use whatever you want to call it, the heavy side method. Sometimes it's referred to as the cover-up method. I like to kind of be a little bit more formal and write down what I'm doing here, like letting n be 0 would give me a result of 1 equaling a times 1. Well, boom, there you go. a is 1. And then if we let n be something other than 0 that's opportunistic for us, like negative 1, that basically allows us to cover up this. And 1 would equal negative 1 times b, which, oh, b is negative 1. And you know what? I think that's a good thing. <laughs> I think you want this B to be negative. Otherwise, we don't have this telescoping look. So basically, what that says is that this summation can be of the form 1 to infinity of 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. And as you can see, this now has that telescoping vibe that we really wanted.
So I'm going to go ahead and jump down here and do what I said, write down the first few terms of this guy. So that would give us n equal 1, I would have 1 minus 1 half. If n is equal to 2, 1 half minus 1 third. If n is equal to 3, 1 third minus 1 fourth. I think you get the picture. And if we keep this going, then of course we have some nth term that looks like this. We have an nth plus 1 term that's going to come after that. And that's the one I think we're going to write up anyway. And so what we've got for our sum is 1 that's left after all of these wonderful cancellations occur. And then all that we can really do is add the limit of some term way down the list that we're just going to name as our nth plus 1 term. But really, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter because all of this is going to zero out on us and our sum is going to be equal to 1. Hopefully this makes a little bit of sense. I have one more video planned that covers one more telescoping series that involves this partial fraction decom that I want you to tune in for. After that, telescoping series is a wrap and we've finished our discussion over topic 10.2 and we can move on with our convergence tests. Anyway, thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.